This is an exciting day for me. I own a Robinson R44, and I'm here at the Robinson factory with... Chris Smith. I'm an experimental test pilot for the factory. God, what a cool title that is. I'm just like <laughs> a YouTube guy with some cameras. The helicopter we're flying right now is an R44, and it is super cool because it has the new empennage. And real quick, before we take off, can you run everybody through why this empennage is so important? The current Robinson design has a asymmetrical horizontal portion of that of the empennage. So the new version is now a symmetrical empennage. And what that means is that both sides of the ships are identical as far as how much empennage is on the left and the right, unlike the, the previous version where you would only have the empennage uh, protruding the on the pilot side of the aircraft. It provides some dynamic stability improvements for us, you know, at or near the envelope of the aircraft. You know, up and away, you're going to notice, even when you're flying, you're notice zero difference in the handling qualities or characteristics of the aircraft. Is zero. that true? Zero. I was expecting some nuance, like, oh, it's a little bit this or that. Nothing. So I, I think a lot of people have this... Um, kind of perception when they when they start looking at like kind of the basic aerodynamics of the aircraft well now that horizontal stab is is up farther more under the the rotor system or inside the tip plane path which then would induce a pitching moment in a hover and as you can tell here it's the hovering just like a normal helicopter there's no different pitch angle or anything like that Roger, we're crossing Alpha, 29 left, clear to go for the southeast departure, 4054 kilo. Thank you, ma'am. There, there is no difference there, and, you know, I was part of the entire flight test program here, and um, I can prove numerically that there is no difference. Question number two, the distance between center of gravity and the tail, it's like, okay, so maybe there's a different a lever on yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So it's got a longer arm, which would change the moment that, that, that may be there. But we found very little change, if any, um, measurable change in that location uh, moved forward. Gotcha. So when I took the Robinson safety course, uh -huh. uh, a lot of talk about, you know, if you get into uh, turbulence, get to like 60, 65 knots, between uh -huh. 60 and 70, yep. good safe space to be. Yep. Can you still get into the right roll with that uh, symmetrical stabilizer? So we talked about the improvement in dynamic behavior, you know, at the high speed or with outside disturbances. So the, really the symmetrical stabilizer, what it's done is, if not totally got rid of, reduced to near null, the right rolling behavior in those types of situations. So really where that becomes an advantage to the pilot is that now they're not reacting as a human would by putting in, for example, left cyclic if you get a right roll. They're not reacting to that, right? And, it, and it's gone. That doesn't mean you still aren't susceptible to mass bumping. It just doesn't mean that initial behavior drives the pilot to make the wrong input in that exact situation, right? So the 60 knot rule that you use, the, um, you know, in turbulence being worried about, you know, getting light and low G is an absolute, you know, founded worry to have. The slower you are, the likelihood of getting into a low G condition is also reduced. Forward velocity is, is tied very closely to um, the likelihood of getting into low G. With the asymmetric stab or the, eight, or the new symmetrical stab, that does not change, right? And I would not say that the H stab would change the way that you fly the helicopter in those conditions. It just will not produce the right rolling behavior if you do it get in that condition. But the mass bump and the low G, all of that is still a real, you know, safety concern. And I think you slowing down is the, is the right thing to do. And that behavior is, is correct. Got you. So I think about it in automotive terms, which is like um, you shouldn't drive dangerously fast on a road that uh, conditions don't justify it. Yep. Uh, and then this might be akin to like adding stability control, where it's like you have margin and you have a safety net, but uh, good judgment dictates that you still not drive like an idiot. Same exact concept of flying in turbulence, right? You are going to get to a point where you are going so fast that your inertia of the body of the helicopter wants to keep going the direction, and turbulence or bad pilot input is going to induce the rotor system to change direction, but not the body of the aircraft, which then leads to the low G, the right roll, and then the bad behavior of the pilot. The new h stab reduces the right roll tendency, which reduces the potential bad behavior of the pilot putting in the wrong correction, which is the left. Unlike anybody I've ever talked to personally before, uh -huh. uh, you actually have gone and induced 
that low G right roll as part of your job as a test pilot. And that's the kind of thing that I would never do and not want to be a part of, nor should any pilot try that. But because it's part of your job, that's something you've experienced. Can you just describe from a pilot's perspective the difference in your corrective reaction with the asymmetrical uh, stabilizer versus the symmetrical? How does it feel uh, yeah. from the pilot seat? Yeah, so from the pilot seat, the improvement in dynamics is the first thing that you encounter, right? You, you, you get yourself in a low G position, either a pull up and a pushover or just a, you know, kind of more aggressive pushover from a, a trim state. Um, the dynamic behavior goes away, right? So the recovery on both should be the same, right? It's either you do nothing or apply a little bit of off cyclic to increase the load factor in, in the right direction. But you, your instantaneous feeling of something going wrong or you know, that uh, hyper awareness that you would normally get of, oh, that's uncommanded goes away. So that kind of in itself um, kind of dictates how comfortable you are in in that situation, right? So if you, you know, could get rid of the right roll, um, all of a sudden you get into a low G condition, but you're not having that additive dynamic effect. Of course, you're in a more comfortable environment to slow down, for example, or you know just apply a little bit of apcyclic pressure rather than having to deal with the rolling behavior as well as is putting out. So part of the requirement in, in our testing is to um, test low G pushovers, especially during our strain surveys. The rolling behavior is nonlinear. You can't always predict the rate of roll so you may push it over and it may you know, be pretty benign and then the next time you do it at the same exact trim conditions, it may be radically different. So that's kind of the, the things that you also deal with with that right rolling behavior that is, is improved with the, with the new horizontal stabilizer. So all of that together, really it boils down to the dynamic behavior in those conditions that are outside the envelope of the aircraft are much more benign and, and intuitive to, to what you would expect to, to happen. All R44s leaving the factory now have that new empennage? Yep, so just recently, uh, you, as you probably know, we all our paperwork is finally approved from the FAA, and, and now uh, we can sell from the factory the, the empennage on all brand new production ships. They're also available now as a retrofit kit, which I think is a, is a great thing, and I, I think to come, the you know, Robinson, we have, have tried our best to reduce the cost of that, so it's attainable for, for uh, most customers that do have the asymmetrical stabilizer. Most field mechanics um, that, you know, kind of have been around Robinson products can install this effectively and safely and, you know, well. So part of the entire design of the, of the uh, horizontal stabilizer was really uh, focused around the intent of the retrofit market. We think it's very important to have that available to people that currently have um, an R44 and would like to, to get into the, the new symmetric h step With helicopter repairs or uh, upgrades, uh, you never know how much something is going to cost. So when I saw the uh, price of the retrofit kit, I was like, oh, this is priced like you want people to buy it. Yep. And so I thought that was super cool. May I ask, can I try uh, the controls and Absolutely. see how it feels? All right. Okay. I am a, an R44 pilot and I usually sit from the... Do uh, you have the controls? I have the controls. Do you have the controls. Okay. Normally I'm sitting over there, but uh, okay, it feels like a uh, 44. Yep. So, <laughs> and, and it, you know, you can make some turns out here if you want. Just make sure you clear the area. Sure thing. Um, I'm monitoring the, the local traffic frequency, so we're good. And we have traffic up here on our screen. Great. So, uh, Mostly I'm noticing that uh, this is a much more modern aircraft than my 44. I've got, like, uh, <laughs> like screens and stuff. It's <laughs> amazing. There's a little now, bit of glass in here. Yeah, this is great. Be my guest to, to slow down to a slower speed so you kind of get that dynamic range. Um, we can even climb a little bit and get, you know, up above, you know, normal cruise speed. And just so you can feel that there is no dynamic change with speed either. People thinking, well, at high speeds, there must be a drastic difference with more stabilizer out there, which uh, just isn't true. So so you um, literally need, no, there's no adaptation on the pilot's part. Zero. Zero. Okay. I, I, I'll be honest, if... If I blindfolded you and picked an ace that you know asymmetrical and then put you in a symmetrical, you you, you couldn't tell me which one was which. Okay. I love having an R44. It's such a, a great ship for my purpose, which is flying with my wife and my daughter. Uh -huh. uh, but in the back of my mind, I was thinking, how do I do this in the safest way possible? Yep. And so just having that little extra sense of security, having a little bit more confidence in the air, yeah. I think is is absolutely huge for me. So. Yeah. So getting it light and the rolling behavior, you still need to be hyper aware of that because yep. the problem is. If you get light, right, and you don't get the right roll, but you still put in a big movement, you're going to still have a mass bumping event. Yep. It's just not going to happen with the right roll. You have to be careful because you will now feel more 
apt okay, to, to be able to do kind of some more aggressive maneuvering, but that maneuvering is still as dangerous as it was before because low G is a real thing in a semi-rigid rotor system, right? Yeah. So just just be aware that the improvement in the dynamic behavior in those instances doesn't mean that you should go out and try to get closer to the envelope. Yeah. And, and that's 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 the fundamental. Just put a little bit of a, of a dive in there and just get her up to like, you know, 128, you know, just don't pull it over the red. And, just to kind of feel that, you know, there is no pitching moment that changes. There's no, you know, difference in ride quality. There's no, you know, handling qualities issues. No oscillations begin. There's nothing that, you know, it, it's really the, the most benign change you, you could imagine. Yeah, this feels great. <laughs> yeah. no, it just, yeah. just feels very familiar, which, I mean, that's the way to do it. By the way, uh, how long did it take to develop? So it's an, it's an interesting story how it all came to be. Um, part of this, it's a very hard problem. Like helicopter aerodynamics, like just, you know, wrap your head around, you know, half the concepts and you've already doing, you're doing good. But a dynamic, you know, kind of problem like this and the, the whole physics that go into, you know, what may be causing this right roll, you would think, well, it's super intuitive. Like, what, what, you only had a horizontal stab on the right side. Why didn't you think of that? Well, it's a much harder problem than that, right? There could be a lot of things that were contributing to that right rolling factor other than that. So we had to do our diligence to actually build a physics-based model of this aircraft, right? And to build a model with that fidelity that you can actually get, um, you know, correct and true behavior out of takes a long time. So once we had that developed, of course, then we could try where can we put this horizontal stab? You know, can it be moved around? Um, what is the right dimension for this thing so that you don't have to go up and spend, you know, seven years trying to figure out where it needs to go and, and what's going to produce the best behavior. So that physics-based model took us, uh, uh, you know, many years to come up with and refine. And then once we had that, we were able to develop the and, and flight test pretty rapidly the, the entire system. I don't have a definitive number because it yeah. was many years that we were working towards the model that you could say was part of this development. I would say, you know, three years is, a, is kind of a a ballpark, uh, you know, development program. I had also spent. wondered, too, because, like, Frank Robinson was so good at finding efficiencies and doing things in a very smart way. Uh -huh. I wondered if there was any advantage to the asymmetrical horizontal stabilizer that is is lost by going to the symmetrical. Is there any downside? We did incur a slight weight cost there. That's a very small piece in the in the puzzle. R22, I guess, is coming pretty soon, yeah, too? Yeah, R22 is going to have the same exact horizontal stabilizer edition. Same behavior. You're not going to know the difference. Increased in dynamic performance, you know, at high speeds approaching the edges of the envelope. And, and that's that's the fundamental fact is that it approve, improves that, you know, right rolling behavior when you're kind of approaching the envelope or when you're in, you know, kind of a position with, you know, some outside disturbance that's, uh, you know, larger than, than normal, I would say. Gotcha. So the next step for me is get my hands on a kit and install it. And I am really excited to uh, to take that step when the opportunity arises. If you guys have any questions about the new empennage, go ahead and leave them in the comments and uh, I'll share whatever information I know. And uh, you can also go over to Robinson's website if you want to see any more details about the empennage. But yeah, it's in production and it's uh, coming to a retrofit kit near you soon. Uh, I got one hand for you. Want to do a high five? There we go. We'll see you guys next time. Later, one. guys.